So in this video, we're gonna share with you our top 10 reasons why we really enjoy living the RV lifestyle. We are a family of five that loves adventure, connecting with people, and trying something new. Try ah! something new every day. Four years ago, we got rid of our house and all of our stuff and moved into an RV full time to give us the freedom to explore the world. Since COVID shut down international travel, we are back in the RV for more adventures until we get our sailboat sometime in 2021. Let's inspire each other along the way and live a life with no regrets. So hit that subscribe button and let's get ready to try something new. So recently we actually did test out like thinking, oh man, are the kids missing something? Are they missing their own rooms and space? So we said, let's rent a house for a few months and see if we're missing something because it's been a few years that we've been in the RV. So what happened, Jimmy? All right, so we got this house, four bedrooms. Everybody got their own room. We went to Ikea, blew a crazy amount of money. We were in the house for a few months and we realized this is not for us. It was an epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> it was an epic fail. Let me give you a little story of how it went down. So we're in there a few weeks, maybe. Everybody's got their bed. They didn't even want to sleep in their own they bed. They were scared to go in their own rooms. Scared to go in their own rooms. And so one night we said, you know what, let's have a slumber party. We'll take everybody's mattress, put it on the floor in our bedroom. We'll just have crash out, have movie night, popcorn. And after that night, never nobody left. wanted to put their mattress never back left. in their bed. So here we are in this giant house and only using 20% of it because everybody's used to being in a small space. This is 300 square feet that we live in here. We were in 2000 square feet. It was too big. Nobody knew where each other was. They weren't feeling the energy of our family. And so once we were all in the same room, they're like a bunch of little bears and a cubs. And they said, oh, we're safe, yeah. we're home. Let's all snuggle. How are we gonna kick them out? We can't kick them out after so that. So who would have thunk it? They really like being next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and us. I never would have thought it, like it was that much, but it, it just woke us up and made us realize, what are we doing? You know, it's like one of those little things that come in, oh, but you know, you know, we were thinking maybe they're crammed back there. But apparently, no. So what did we do? We sold everything. Put it all on Marketplace. Pulled sold the, it all. Pulled the RV out of storage and hit the road and once then again. Hit the and road. now we know for sure, without a question of a doubt, no looking we back We really in the like rear each mirror. other. <laughs> <laughs> the RV life is definitely for us. Yes. Because we tried it out for a moment and realized yes. it's not for us. So now we're going to get into our top 10 reasons on why we love the RV life. The first thing that we like about living in the RV is the RV parks that you get to choose from. So you can choose where you want to live in the country at any time of year, which is pretty amazing. If you want to live on a tropical beach down in Key West, you can just drive your house down there and watch the sunrise on one side of the island and the sunset on the other. If you want to go out in the forest and have a, a nature experience, you can drive your RV out in the middle of nowhere and do some boondocking. Yeah, I think like right now we're on a lake. We're backed up to a lake probably 20 feet away from us. And so the view is just phenomenal. I love the freedom that you can just pick any spot you want and you have whatever kind of atmosphere that you're looking for. A lot of time we live in Las Vegas in the desert Southwest. So when it gets too hot in the summertime, we hightail it out of there and head up North. And then when it gets too cold in the north, we hightail it back down south and just stay warm. <laughs> follow that warm weather. Follow, I think follow the 80 degrees. You know, that's again. actually my favorite thing because I grew up in New York, freezing, freezing winters, probably more than half the year, I was cold. And I said, you know what? I finally got to a certain age and I go, I don't have to be cold anymore. And so I moved to Vegas. But guess what? Vegas is still cold in the winter. And so with the RV, we can follow the, the warm weather. <laughs> Number two. If you don't like your neighbors, you can just move. I Literally so. drive away <laughs> to a different area. So if you don't like your neighbors, just move. Bye, Felicia. So, you know, when we lived in our house, you know, the people that move live around you, sometimes you don't even know who lives around you because people are very antisocial. For us, we're very talkative people. We like to know who's around us. Coming from New York City, everybody knows each other. You walk down the street, you're like, hi, hi. In certain areas, it's just not like that. And so, but, and sometimes on the flip side, you have a really bad neighbor. We've all had bad neighbors and that kind of sucks. And when we did rent that house, there was a neighbor next door that was pretty undesirable. They were very like rude and they, you know, they just had this weird vibe and we we're like, what the hell? So you kind of just have to deal with them for as long as you're there. Now, if you're there for 10, 20 years, that's a crappy situation to be in, <laughs> but in the RV, you can literally say, you know what, I'm out of here. And we've done it before. We've got, we have done it. We've been in uh, 
I don't know, you kind of meet friends, but then after the honeymoon wears off, you know, maybe get on each other's nerves or the energy gets wrong or something like that. And we just go, hey, you know what? I'm not really feeling that good in this area anymore. So you go talk to the front office, you drive away and go park on the other side of the RV park. And, and then it's, it's like, like a brand new experience. <laughs> a whole new experience. You're like, a whole wow, new this experience. Is nice. Life is amazing again. So, number two, you can always move in your house. Number three is the people you meet along the way. There's something about an RV park that's really, really special. And the people that you meet in the RV parks, kind of everybody has the same mindset, the in like same minded, energy, yeah. and everybody just wants to hang out and talk and get to know each other. And as you depart and leave, you still be, remain friends with all these people, you stay connected on social media, and people often follow each other all around the country, mm -hmm. and you end up traveling with a big group of friends and just having a great time. So the third thing that we like about living in an RV park is all the wonderful people that you meet. So number four kind of piggybacks on number three. RVing is like living in the 60s when you're in an RV park. Everybody, and literally when we first moved into the RV and we went into that first RV park, it was at night, it was late at night. The next morning, we opened our door and I swear, every single person that walked by, walking their dog, was like, hi, hi. And it was like, <laughs> what, what, where are we wow, at right now, hi. what's going on? You know, and, and the funny part of that, the funny twist side of that is, when you're in the RV park and you're, you know, you're there for a while, whatever, and you get used to that, that when you leave the RV park and you're still in that mindset of like, hi, hi, other people might look at you kind of like, who the hell are you waving at? I don't know you. It's, it's the thing is like eye contact. When we go into Walmart or any, any store, Target or whatever, and we make eye contact with people and people like kind of give us a dirty look and I'm like, oh yeah, we're not in the RV we're park. We're not in the RV park anymore. <laughs> don't wave. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that we love about that idea of the 60s is the kids, we have five bikes outside. You can leave your bikes out all night long. Well, you know, depending on where you're Yeah, at. I mean, for the most part, 99% yeah. of the time. But you can rest assured that your stuff is trusted outside. Everybody's looking out for each other. If you need something, you go to a neighbor. It's just a really good, wholesome, yeah. all around good feeling. Happy Valentine's Day! Now we get to number five. It's all about the kids. So every RV park we go to, there's usually tons of kids. And so in this one, we've been here for almost a month now, and they have met probably 15 to 20 new kids. This happens pretty much everywhere we go. And if they really connect with the kids, they keep in touch, they change uh, kids' messenger information, and they stay in touch wherever we are. So that happens all over the world. It's like a big spider web of kids' connections. So we know RV life is actually enriching their lives and their friendships because they're exposed to so many more people than as if we were just in our house. We love you, All right, number six is the amount of freedom that you have living in an RV is astronomical. Once we got rid of our house and all of our stuff, it was absolutely mind boggling how wherever we wanted to go, we could go. If some opportunity arose where some friends are going overseas to Southeast Asia, hey, let's put the RV in storage and head over there too. Like the amount of just, absolute freedom that you have is amazing. So I visually look at it like this. It's like you're in your house and you have all your stuff. And then when you make the mindset, the change that you're gonna move into the RV, you realize, oh, okay, so we gotta snip all the chains of the bills, the utilities, the uh, everything. Responsibilities. The house, the responsibilities, all the crap that's keeping you down. Yard and works. once you snip it all, it's like, oops, sorry. Okay. You become free. Like literally, you just start to fly. That's how I look at it. You know, I'm a very visual person. And so thinking about how we can just literally go from one country, one end of the country to the other, top to bottom, with our house and just the, the minimalist stuff that we have and need and want, it's amazing, you know? And when we did rent that house for a little bit, it made us just realize like how we felt, we felt kind of stuck because in our, we're both very spontaneous kind of people. We kind of thrive off each other in that sense. And so, like you said, somebody says, hey, we're going to be going to Bali. Do you guys want to come? We're like, we can. Let's go. We don't have any mortgage to pay. We don't have anything. So we could literally put the RV in storage, hop on a flight, and take off. Now, we're not talking about spending tons of money to do oh, all this kind of stuff. Super, super this cheap. is a very inexpensive <laughs> lifestyle. It's actually way cheaper. Doing something like that, hopping on a flight to go somewhere on the other side of the world, is still a ton cheaper than having a house and utilities and all that kind of stuff and all those responsibilities. So... in Changu, Bali. This villa right here we got for $1,000 a month 
it's kind of in the high season, so that was a super duper steal. So for us, and that gives us the freedom to do that cool stuff that we couldn't probably couldn't do if we were in our house. All right, so we we're just talking about how inexpensive it is to travel. And if you want to get even more inexpensive, number eight is boondocking. Mm -hmm. Now, boondocking is when you live out in the land, off the land. Well, not really off the land, but kind of. Depends on how deep you want to go. But Some people do. You don't have to pay for an RV site, so all you have is your RV payment if you have that. We don't have a payment, so when we go boondocking, we live for free. It's just food. You just go to the store and buy food. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is to be totally outfitted with solar, which is a great investment if you're gonna really take advantage of the whole boondocking thing. We don't have solar on this because we don't think that... Well, you know, we like to travel in addition to being in the RV. And so we didn't want to dump a bunch of money into the whole solar setup and the batteries and all that kind of stuff. Like some people do, because they really enjoy the whole boondocking experiences. For us, it's here and there once in a while, but I love that option. Uh, like our kids love nature. And so this past summer, we went to Idaho, met up with a bunch of families. Shout out to all you families out there. Boondockapalooza. Boondockapalooza was the name, that's <laughs> that right. Name. Marcy coined that term. Yeah. And, um, we just were able to, you know, every couple of days you have to go and dump your tanks and refill and all that. But it was an awesome experience and so freeing. And the kids were like little animals in nature. It was amazing. There was a few families out there that would tell us they would live off $5 a day. $5, $5 a, day. a day. So, so if you're interested in this lifestyle and you're interested in really saving money, boondocking may be for you. All right, this is probably one of my favorite things. Number nine, and that is minimalism. You know, we have never been like big minimalists. We always had a huge house and all the rooms and uh, all that crazy stuff. And then we felt strangled and we didn't know why. It's because you know we what? had too much stuff. We were victims <laughs> to the stuff. So the stuff kept us down. The stuff kept us locked in. The stuff kept us from being us and really yeah. being free and enjoying life. And so as we purge and get rid of the stuff and throw away all the garbage that we accumulate throughout the years, we realize I have a famous term that I, I like to think that I coined and it is, we work five or six years to accumulate five or six years worth of stuff to eventually give it away to Goodwill or sell it at a garage sale for the fraction of the price. So that five or six years that you worked was absolutely for nothing. So yes. if you didn't have to acquire that stuff, you wouldn't have to work that long. And Well, you know, so this was the deal. Before we had kids, we thought we were chasing the American dream, right? We had our big house, we had three rental properties, and we were like, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to invest, 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 and have more responsibilities, more responsibilities. And then, you know, we actually had Nixon, and um, our oldest, and then all of a sudden, like we had, our tenant would move out and we would do all the work. We liked doing all the, the handiwork to the house and fixing up and painting. But then we kind of got smacked in the face with reality and we go, plus our output monthly expenses, we had to make a certain amount every month just to get by, to make sure everything was, and was covered. A, and it was a lot and we were barely, we were like this, like barely. Well, barely. you know, you just keep going and keep going and keep investing and you just make more to do it all. And But it became this rat race of all this craziness. And then we realized, what are we doing? This is. This may be the American dream for lots of people, but this is sure hell not our American dream. This, this ain't is, my dream. This is not Sandy and Jimmy's dream. And so that's, and so it was actually, it's been a process, progress, like process over years of the downsizing and downsizing and downsizing and really whittling down to what's important to us. And then I think we've kind of come to the conclusion that we're we, minimalists. We, we need three or four outfits and a camera and a I computer. Mean, a few more. You might need a few more. And some lip gloss, and that's about it. Lots of lip gloss. But you know, overall, we're damn minimalists. Who would have known? <laughs> uh, I, su I swear, it's it's the easiest. People ask us all the time, like, where do you do this? And I go, we don't need much. We traveled Southeast Asia for three months in a backpack. We went another time for six months with three suitcases. Yeah. So it's, it's I just need totally some pink hair dye. Yeah. You can I need some pink hair dye you can and find some bleach. That and I'm good, you know? We can roll. All right, the last one that we love about this RV lifestyle, we hit on a little bit earlier, but we wanted to really drive it home, is the connections that you meet along the way. We have so many amazing friends all around the world, all around the United States, and it's all because of this travel lifestyle. So the more you get out there, the more people you meet, the more amazing experiences you have, and it just makes life wonderful. It makes it very rewarding, and we have a very fulfilled and lucky life that we get to do this and meet wonderful people along the way. Yes. I think in the travel lifestyle, we're all like-minded people. We all get it that maybe the whole being in a house for 30 years isn't really for us. And it's more just having a free 
open mind towards whatever happens happens and just let's go have fun um, and let's have experiences with each other and do all these crazy cool experience different cultures and places around the world and in the RV plays around the country off the beaten path places and so you really find your people when you do this kind of a lifestyle um, if you are into this kind of stuff and for us it's 100% been amazing I mean wouldn't change it for the world uh, so when people ask us are we sick of this small space do we, you know, are we done with this whole crazy lifestyle? What do we say, babe? Heck no, we're just getting no. started. I, I always tell people, this is like a layers of an onion. Yep. Every like month, that. every quarter, every year, the layers are peeling back and we're discovering new, authentic, cool, different things that we didn't even know about ourselves yeah. and this lifestyle. And the journey for us has only just begun, but we will continue this nomadic lifestyle for the foreseeable future because we are always trying to try, try something, something new. new. Get out there and try something new. Peace out guys. Try something new. All right. Everybody. Nice job. <laughs>